starting that portfolio was like kind of I feel like I doomed myself almost we're in the sense that I have so so many friends over over the past couple of years I think four years of my life I've made so many so many friends that have come directly from from Ukraine from Kyiv from Odessa from Chernihiv um, that I treat as you know brothers and sisters to me um, and so when I kind of, I mean, I draw with a purpose. Everything I paint is like with a purpose. So when I was kind of thinking about, when, when I first stumbled across the scholarship, I was like, okay, theme, I love themes. I'm a very organized person. I, w I wanted to be like, boom, boom, boom. And I kind of thought to myself, what is the kind of piece of art that I can make multiple of, right? Like, because usually if I make a piece of art, I'm like, okay, it's gonna be this emotion, that, and that's gonna be solid. I'll probably never draw like that again. So I was kind of thinking, they're asking for six pieces. Like, how do I, I gotta, it's gotta come from my heart and my internal, you know, kind of, what do I love? What means a lot to me? Um, and it was Ukraine. Ukraine means a lot, a lot to me. And I was thinking, you know, Ukraine meant a lot to me years before this war because my family has suffered. They've, they've suffered in, in Chernobyl. My friends have suffered in Holodomir and the 2016 Maiden Revolutions. And there's just constant fighting for democracy. And it's just like, people don't even know where Ukraine is on a map sometimes. And that's startling. It's very startling to pe for people to be like, oh, isn't Ukrainian just Russian? And I'm like, absolutely not. Um, you know, if my friends heard that, they'd be like, whoa, 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 that's, that was, whoa, okay. Um, and so I kind of thought like, I'm Ukrainian, I love Ukraine, all my friends are Ukrainian, and they're probably, you know, those are probably the most important people in my life, um, are the people I consider my brother, my sister, and my family. Um, and I thought, okay, I think I'm gonna draw a portfolio of six pieces based around not only the current war on Ukraine, but the struggle that's been going on since Ukraine even existed, all the language bans and all the assimilation that's been going on in that country, and that kind of, a lot of people don't know how patriotic the Ukrainians are and how separate they are. You know, like even when I was younger, younger, I was like, Ukrainian's just a dialect of Russian, which is like, whoa, absolutely not. It's completely separate. Even the culture, the dresses, everything is completely separate. Um, from the Russian or Belarusian culture. Um, and I really wanted to depict that, I think, in my art. So when I started drawing those pieces, I put, you know, I, I have one of my closest friends right now serving um, in Ukraine, and that's, that's been really, really hard for me because he is, you know, he sometimes doesn't get back to us. He sometimes, we lose connection with him, and it, it just is very hard and frustrating for me sometimes. Um, and when I make art, normally, um, it, it's all my emotions, whether it's happiness, sadness, anger, um, you know, kind of like I base a lot of my art on dreams or nightmares. Um, and you know, a lot of nightmares I was having recently was, where is Maxim? Where is my friend? How are my friends, um, you know, who have just come from Ukraine? Are they okay? Are they struggling? And so I thought, okay, I have grief going on in my mind. I have, I have like, I'm, I'm sad, I'm, I'm hurt, I'm, you know, hurting for my friends, and I thought, I want to put all my friends hurt, Olga and, and Maxim, all their hurt and their pain, but their bravery and their patriotism into these pieces. I think art is so powerful, and it can capture, you know, colors, um, subjects, designs, and like all those patterns I have around, um, all my drawings, those are extremely powerful, those symbols, lots of symbols in my drawings um, that I've tried to kind of capture from, especially, like I said, Olga is my closest friend right now, from her terror and kind of her nightmare and what, what terrible horror fairy tale she's living right now. So I made, it was very difficult to draw those six drawings because they were really emotional and heavy to draw, but I knew deep down that I'm like, this is gonna talk to people. These are going to, you know, whether or not you know where Ukraine is on a map, if you know any Ukrainian, if you have any connection, you're gonna feel something from these pictures. That was my goal is, you know, you might know nothing about what's going on right now, any of the conflicts, any of the history, but you're gonna get a taste from this portfolio. You're gonna get a taste of my friend's nightmare, my nightmare, hundreds of thousands of people's nightmares right now. 
Um, so that was Marushka's horror fairy tale, and that's kind of where I wanted that design to go. I think as far as, I know you asked um, what my technique was for that. Um, so I use an online drawing software called Clip Studio Paint, um, which I consider it like a giant blank canvas and a bunch of paint brushes. Um, so I think the main brushes I used mostly in those drawings would, I would be using like, um, I used a flat brush with acrylic, I used uh, watercolor, and I used colored pencil and a blender. And I think those are mainly, I've been, you know, I've been drawing for about like six years or something online now. Um, I started on paper, but online, I'm just so much better with the colors and it's, it's easier. I mean, it's a lot more convenient. There's a back button, incredible, <laughs> incredible. Um, so yeah, I started out on paper, but um, online spoke to me a lot because I could do these crazy backgrounds all of a sudden and I could mix together colors and use all sorts of different uh, textures to really get like skin down or um, snow was a huge thing like when I, was, I have in every single picture snow and I was like how do I draw snow I don't know how to draw snow and I found this the the, the uh, colored pencil brush when you make it really big you get all the little grains and then you had snow mm -hmm. um so yeah i i'm not a very techie person so i can't really figure out I, I can't even figure out how to pump a reference when i'm using clip studio paint um so i i usually rely on just really basic like here's your color palette here's your paintbrush um and how i usually start those drawings i've been asked a lot by my friends like okay so you create like a sketch or something right i'm like no sketch there is we don't need a sketch you always start like I always zoom in really far into my canvas and I just start drawing an eye like you start with like the pupil then you draw the little like pretty color whatever and then you draw the skin around it and then you start just like expanding from there it's very bizarre but I just can't figure out how to sketch so like you draw from the inside out I draw exactly I draw from the inside out so then you get the face and the neck and for instance on cross the red line um, her face appeared first, and then her headdress, so she was a floating head with a headdress for a pretty long time. Um, then the ribbons, I actually drew her shirt last because I couldn't figure it out. So I ended up drawing her skirt, which is all colored pencil, and then I used some spray paints. It's very exquisite. Clip Studio Paint has like every single kind of paintbrush you want. So I used like an airbrush and like made, gave it some like, what are those, pleats, mm -hmm. crinkles. Um, and, and so I did her, her um, the woman standing in the picture first, like Ms. Schmidt said, inside out. And everything behind her was last since it's darker. So what I do is I take a very, very dark, dark red and the rushnik or the hanging towel behind her, you just kind of scribble on and then, and then you like scribble on, you know, some patterns and then you just like copy and paste it and you have two identical mm -hmm. towels. Um, and then you just draw a little picture frame by scribbling with some colored pencils and some like textured flat brushes. Draw a guy in there, make it a little dark so you can't really see. And you have crossed the red line. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think my process is, is mainly just, I'm very bare, I really like the basics of just like, here's your eraser, here's your paint, here's your, here's your colored pencils and blender, and there's your white canvas. I'm not very like, no correction, you know, like super tech stuff. I'm not that intelligent. Um, so anyway, I think overall, um, you know, the the Marushka's horror fairy tale, all six of those, and even the three national winners, they were. It was quite a journey for me to make. Emotionally, it was it was very intense, and also technically, like being technical about it. I have never really drawn backgrounds before. Um, I usually just draw floating people in white outer space and drawing full mountains in the background and ice and a house was very new territory for me. Um, and so it just goes to show you that these kinds of scholarships and these kinds of competitions and getting your art out there, um, no matter who it's for, if it's for, your, if it's for your school, if it's for a national competition, it, it expands kind of like, I've, I've learned so much about my art and like how to, how to also pour my emotions into that art and what's really important to me, so. I think that that like really drives your art and the fact like you are, one of the things that makes you such an exquisite artist.
artist is that you're making art about things that are really important and meaningful, not only to you, but to, to the world. Oh, and that, that and, and you also have a very exquisite technique that um, those two things, I think like many artists, probably most artists are trying to, to oh. find those two things, the balance of those two things. And yeah. that's what makes for really powerful art. Thank you. You've got it. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, thank you so much.